democracy in practice. democracy in practice. democracy in practice. Hello, glad you could join us on the twin broadcast of Liberty TV and Liberty Radio. I am Tunde Mahmoud Hassan. One of the critical and naughty issues hitting up the Nigerian democratic landscape and indeed the entire public space is separatist agitation. The let's break up fold include the Odua nation and the Biafra agitators. That's on the one side. On the other side, there are interests, especially state actors, that regard the agitations as infractions, but are at pains to hold a seemingly fragmented federation together. The efforts to build a middle ground are still ongoing. The daggers are probably drawn under the position that, the, that together a united Nigeria is, the greater the interest of the country served Africa and the entire black world. Amidst this, the coalition of northern groups, the CNG, went public for the stance that apparently shifted grounds with a call on the National Assembly to cede to the Biafra demand to secede. Is this a bluff? A bold, daring bluff? Or does this suggest coming to terms with the situation? That's the thrust on democracy in practice as I welcome to the platform three gentlemen who are so joined. Madam Smaila Musa is a strategist of the Northern uh, Coalition of Northern Groups. Thank you for having me. Also on the platform is Barista Joseph. And to complete the team is uh, another barrister, Ahmed um, Tijani Boys. He's also based here in Abuja. He's also most of It's a pleasure to be here. I think you're the, the target here. Okay. <laughs> Northern Coalition of Northern Coalition of Northern You're yeah. the director of strategy. Yes. You just stunned the, the polity. The, the call on the National Assembly to take a position. First, let's find out why and what informed this decision. Let's get why okay. did the CNG take that position? Okay, um, the position, you know, it wasn't like a, a, a very rash or spontaneous thing. It was due to happenings over time. We have. Uh, we have sat down, we have, you know, checked the, uh, the indices 
and all the permutations that what are the likely things to happen and what is actually bringing about this uh, overheating the polity every now and then, you know, and the federal government seems not to be on top of it at some point where some people keep issuing threats every minute, you know, to say that they want to succeed. And you see, we, we actually look at so many things. And when we look at how innocent northerners are being killed, you know, down south, you know, people who are just going about their lawful businesses who are being attacked simply because some groups feel, you know, you, are, you either give us this thing or we get it by crook. And we feel, look, it doesn't have to come to this. Every human life should be taken with seriousness. We shouldn't wait until when uh, notable northerners are being targeted because we've had uh, this kind of thing before, even though some of us were not born at the time, you know, during the Sardar era. So we just, if some people feel they want just recently, the uh, former uh, secretary of the government of the federal, and I think he be also, uh, you know, made a statement during the I think it was uh, the Sun uh, Award ceremony where he said the unity of Nigeria is actually negotiable. So uh, we we all just feel look, let some people just love their peace, right? So if we cannot stay together in peace. There should be an alternative, and that alternative should um, be built strong. Let, let me pick from there. I mean, if they want to go, let them go. Yeah. Before I get to the other the two gentlemen, are you daring the system with this position? Is it a shift from? Uh, is it a shift? Or are you daring the system? No. You see, the the issue of daring the system, we actually also have advanced because we feel there are so many ways to actually, you know, make our points known and achieve whatever it is we want to achieve. We did when well, that time when we give quick notice, you know, some persons were not happy about it. They feel no, 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 uh, this can actually uh, boomerang. This can actually, you know, become uh, something of like some kind of war. You know, so this time around we feel well. There are legal we so, we, legal options that we can also explore. Mm -hmm. We can also talk to the National Assembly. You know, because these are institutions that can actually wade into the matter without causing any kind of fracas at anywhere. So we that's why we. But if if it comes to during the institutions, why not? We will do that. But we just want to follow the normal procedures that are legally acceptable. You know. Now, um, Barrister Silas, what's your take in all of this? Uh, do you see, um, I mean, Baba Gana can give you also just made a comment on it. Are we beginning to come to terms with Nigeria as a fragmented entity? I, I don't see it as a fragmented entity. <clears throat> I think what Baba Gana can give you said is uh, the proper thing. Is a uh, is a democratic statement. Mm. That is what is expected in the democracy. Mm. Uh, Nigeria has been unfortunate that the unity we have seems to be foisted. It wasn't worked out, first of all, by the colonial masters. Uh, whether rightly or wrongly, they brought us together. But I think that now that we're together, we ought work out the terms of our union. But the military came and prevented that discussion mm. and they started introducing that time. The, the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. So you don't even talk about it. And then people have been keeping their frustration mm. in mind. So it is beginning to blow out and is blowing out of control. The unity of every union is negotiated. In America, every year the president delivers the State of the Union address, mm -hmm. and he starts or ends with the word that the union is strong. It's a reassurance of that unity, of that union, meaning they are constantly, every day, negotiating and working on it. But in Nigeria, if you talk of uh, self-determination, it is as if you've committed a crime. 
Now, if we were discussing our terms of union, I would bet you that presidential system would not be our best system of government. Because if you look today, even the there's a group now, Middle Belt Group, who want to be on their own. You have the Odua Group, who want to go? So everybody seems to want to leave the union called Nigeria. But I tell you, all of the agitation are highly emotional. People are not uh, taking time to think of the best way forward for Nigeria. Even in divorce, marriages, when you want to divorce, you have to take your time. You don't take decision when both parties are angry. You wait when you can reason and you say, is this the best part? If it is the best part, how or what method will be the best approach in making it happen? Because the way we're going now is like everybody's uh, spoiling for war. Let's go, let's fight. Let's... Nobody will benefit from that. Some of us are more in support of restructuring the country. Because Nigeria as an entity makes you proud. It makes, it makes you it makes you proud. Yes. But you're in Nigeria. You go anywhere, our population is our strength. It is an advantage in the continent and in the world. Mm. But the system of government we practice is not workable. It is questioning our unity every day. Coupled with the kind of president we have today, who has promoted division more than unity. So that is why you see all of this glamour up and down. Okay. Let, let me get your, your, your take. What's your reading of the, the path? this whole discussion is taking at the moment? Well, for me, it's interesting that uh, the discussion is ongoing, being uh, that yeah, there are issues that need to be resolved. The polity is hot, and um, if we don't discuss, dialogue is the best way out. If we don't discuss, you cannot get, the results will be um, very fatal for all parties involved. I don't think Nigeria should go to another civil war. In a situation where you want to move out of Nigeria, then you should dialogue. You should discuss what are your problems. Even the discuss your exit or discuss your stay. Discuss whether you what are your reasons for the exit. Can they be managed? If they can be managed, then where are you going to? Because really, when you divide a nation, we well, have not seen it anywhere that you divided a nation and they are stronger. Even in Eastern Europe, South Sudan, is it? Are they stronger? South Sudan. They're still fighting within themselves. Mm. So I think uh, it's when you dialogue, what are the issues now? All those people that want out is because they feel they're not getting what they want within the system. So what are the issues? Let them dialogue and discuss. Okay. What, what we're seeing is, I mean, there are hardline positions now being taken. Yeah. And you find hostilities building up. Mm. But most of the time, those the agitation have always been tinted by emotions. Yes. We're not bringing the logic to the table, the table to iron out. What is stopping us from taking the bull by the horn and saying, this is wrong, you are wrong, let's get it fixed? But I think some people are taking advantage of the situation, whether for political reasons, but definitely that is why they are not dialoguing properly the way it should be. If you find out, like even the issue of IPOP saying they want out, the is it the other day said, came out and said, no, we don't want out. So is it within the same group, uh, tribe, for instance, they're having issues on that. Even in Odua, it's not all of them that want out. You find out that the Southwestern governors, a lot of them want to be president of Nigeria. How do you want to be president of Nigeria if somewhere that your people are saying you should move out? The same thing in the East. So it's, it is not, uh, I think people need to understand that some people are taking advantage of the situation to capitalize on uh, gains. Um, um, also, so just to add to what you said, there is a total lack of leadership. When leadership fails, uh, others can take advantage of it. The government is losing ground every day. So the government is losing ground every day. So there are ethnic and tribal champions who are becoming popular due to the weakness of government. Now, when people uh, feel the country is not working as, as it ought to, I think what they are doing is what the government 
up to do without being prompted. Going to National Assembly to say, do this. It's, it's not, nobody needs to tell the government to do that. In other words, you think the CNG has taken the right step? Well, if, 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 you, if you ask of that, I will see it differently because also the CNG is also acting emotionally. Right? They're also acting emotionally because they are taking it on a tribal and ethnic basis. We are not. Not don't want you. If you don't want, you can go. You understand? So it, it's not proper. So I'm an Igbo man. I was born in Kaduna. He's my brother. Kaduna. I speak also much more than Igbo. So the CNG, I believe, is a group of interest uh, people with interests. Hmm. Tomorrow, if you get up the north, we'll say they don't speak for us. But they have their own interests. They are speaking because they are from the north. But I can tell you, their view does not represent the entire northern group, or even the majority of northern group. It doesn't well, represent. You know, there have been this argu argument that all this agitation are just the fracas, the infighting among the it's, it's elitist in its in its, it is, in its coloring. It but uh, uh, Musa, for so long. There have been arguments within the public space that apparently is the north and north northern interests that have been so interested in keeping Nigeria as it is. This stance of the CNG seems to be changing that narrative, is it? Yeah, I see. I can tell you for a fact because there are so many things that go on the ground that quite a lot of people don't know about or we won't come publicly to say who and who. But I tell you uh, for who and who matters in northern Nigeria are 80% of them are with the CNG. As a matter of fact, we just don't make statements quite a lot of times. Meetings happen in back and forth, you know, with people of interest, people who matters, people, decision makers. Because you see, when you talk about decision making in a country, in any country anywhere in the world, mm. it's not the majority. Mm. There are, you know, you can have big people that decide to say, this is where we're going, and that's where the rest of the nation is going in the long run, because that's where the way governance is still turned. I mean, it's just like saying, oh, because if Mr. President is the only person, he does not represent Nigeria. But whatever he decides, that's why we need to be careful on the kind of people we bring on board. Because mm -hmm. what they do or do not do or did not do will affect the rest of us in the long run. But of course, I, I'm just, that's a bit of digression, right? You see, the point is, quite a lot of people feel, look, of course the North is interested in having this country called Nigeria. But you see, prior to when we announced the issue of quick notice, we noticed that that, that uh, criminal called Enamde Kanu was having a sway, killing, making pronouncements that yeah, needs to be pushed there. No court has pronounced him a criminal. <laughs> well, you so see, we the, the point is... We cannot call him a criminal on this platform. Well, well that's fine. He's still you going see, through trial. Well, th that's okay. That's a, a different thing in, entirely. But you see, the point I'm making exactly is this. I also have Igbo friends, you know, in their large numbers who also feel, look, this guy does not have a single investment in Nigeria, not even in northern Nigeria. We have majority of our people. As a matter of fact, I tell you on this phone, I have, we're on a, a platform with Ohane is the Indigo leadership in all the 19 northern states, including the FCT, such that whenever there's any kind of or security report that does not favor them, they quickly alert us and we move into action. Oh, we heard some things is going to happen here. Which We've is had, the way it should be. You understand? We've had meetings with them in our, in our headquarters here in Abuja like three times that we hosted them. Mm -hmm. You know, and we brought in other statesmen like oh, well, Professor Abu Abdullahi uh, Bashir Tofa mm -hmm. and the likes of them to come address them and give them some kind of suk or some kind of reassurance that mm -hmm. all is well. You understand? You are protected, your investments are protected. But you see, when you have people who do not have any single stake in Nigeria, you understand, because that's the way it is. Now, trying to put fire on the whole, set fire on the whole country. Forgetting the Igbo man who is earning a living in Katsina, for instance, in Zaria. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care as far as he's concerned. So you know, when somebody has some mental issues who should be in a psychiatric home, but is let loose, and it's trying to set the whole country ablaze, we feel that it's high time we do something. Because some of his followers also who, for whatever reason, 
will not be able to know that look whatever is are your agitations perhaps should have been focused on the leadership not and I mean uh, an innocent houseman in Potako uh, in Potako market trying to sell tomatoes and then you go you lynch him you kill him do you understand so we feel look if you direct this thing to the appropriate quotas we might just fold our arms and say well let them answer you they have the power they have the authority they have everything it takes if and they are should take responsibility and they should take responsibility but when you begin to do things that i mean portray you as somebody who is mentally not okay then we feel look because when you look at the platform the cng itself it's number one and it's uh, 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 either the last, the first, and the last of its mandates is to protect the interests of the North at every level. You understand? So really, and the same thing with some of these other ones, like the Northern Elders Forum and the likes of them. But you see, when we take that decision to begin to say, look, if this is the what these people want, if some of their elders that are supposed to caution them couldn't do it. Because you see, at a point before the last time he escaped out of Nigeria, we saw how he has uh, hijacked the entire leadership of Southeast, including even the political power. Became you understand? He makes pronouncement. He says nobody moves in this state, and so be it. And all the Igbo elders, nobody could caution him. He ran amok. You know, he was completely out of control. And we felt well, if they, uh, their own people cannot control him. We should put some uh, control measures in place too. So, in, in, all, in all of this, we, yeah. are, are you trying to change the narrative? That's number one. Earlier, Barrister Silas was talking about this tribal thing. Is it the right thing? I mean, the, the three of you can banter on this. Is it the right thing to uh, discuss Nigeria on the basis of geography and tribe? Aren't these things so mundane? First of all, be first of all, I, I like to even intervene by saying, I, I listened to him, and most time when he said, we saw this problem, we felt we need to do this, we need to do that, it tells you that uh, he's admitted the failure of governance and system. So they're filling in for government. That is what it means. And the problem is that they are filling in for government from an ethnic standpoint. They are people could not control him. They are people. So until we're ready to build a nation where we are all Nigerians, you don't say they are people, our people, we are protecting the interests of the North. So we are divided already. See, so the point is, you know North, saying? South, East and West, all the people who come to the front table in the public space yes. are always talking tribe or geography. Yes. So if you keep saying that, then what is your justification for calling him criminal if he wants to also defend the interests of the East? As you are defending the interests of the North. Nobody say he shouldn't you, do you, that. You get, you get the point. Don't kill so, our people, that's what we say. The point is, until we are ready to build a nation, we're going to be having this problem. Barista, we have we have divided do you, nations. Do you see the possibility now or later of this hour, you, yours, there, ever, I mean, removed from the Nigerian language. Do well, you see that ever happen? For 61 years, we've been at it. It is not solving anything, it's not achieving at, anything. At the time, at the no. time, we, 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 we succeeded a little where you, you have a northerner being the mayor of Enugu, mm. and people will not look at him and say he's, he's from, from there. Enugu, from the north. So. You know, we started succeeding on the military came in and scattered everything and everybody saw an opportunity. Can we reclaim that situation? I, 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 um, think, uh, I think it's possible, right, but I don't know if we're willing to. When you have too many agitations and we're not really looking, looking at Nigeria as a united nation, the main problem is geography and um, tribe, ethnicity, it's not going to get us anywhere. We all have to come back to the table. That's why I say we need to sit down and dialogue and discuss. Are we looking at a unified Nigeria? Can it be possible? If it is possible, let us do away with all these tribes and locality. When you, when you keep dividing the country by saying this is from this zone, you know, it's these rotational issues, rotational presidency and all that. Those things are, are archaic. Mm. 
we need to really look at it. Are we Nigerians? When we're playing football, we're all Nigerians. When we're watching football, we're all Nigerians. Nobody says the guy that scored the goal is from in the east or from the west. Nobody says that. So what if we can do that in a small scenario like that? What so much can what can we do it when we're looking at the whole nation? It's possible. If you remember there's a time we had a Muslim Muslim ticket. Hmm. Yes, Abiola, Abiola and King Gibe. Uh, King Gibe. Did anybody I'm say they voted for them? Everybody, but even in Oyo, I was in the back in Oyo State. What happened? At that time, it wasn't an issue. You know, it, was, it doesn't matter where you're from, mm. whether you're a tribe or religion, or, it doesn't matter. First of all, you need to be a person that understands that, look, we need to be united. Breaking Nigeria will not help anybody. <laughs> we will all fail. Let me go back to this, the CNG on, on this uh, score that you, you this point you just made um but uh, about competence about certain criteria we should draw to even draw leadership in this country i know the cng also took a position on it uh, i think about a week or, or thereabout even saying that anybody who is aged should forget getting votes but this time again getting votes from the north yeah that's right you see the problem is even before this president came on board, we actually uh, try to caution people, you know, to say, look, yeah, for as much as, you know, there's this agitation that uh, power should come to the north, you also need to be careful because they say uh, twice beaten, you know, I mean, uh, well, how did they put it again? Once beaten, once beaten twice shy. You know, we feel, look, was his health Status. Now, I'm not sure that this, this, this conversation is about an individual. It's about the principle that should drive leadership in this country. You see, at, prior to that time, yes. there was no room for us, you see, because, you see, at the CNG level, you need to understand that there are some things we cannot do because there are people who, or institutions who are saddled with that responsibility of doing. I mean, when you say, just like we call for, I mean, we're uh, uh, telling the courts or the National Assembly to call for a referendum. If we have the power to call for a referendum, we perhaps don't need to refer to them. If you understand. So, but why we're saying this is because we feel, look, if you say, and you know, a bit of digression, even by the constitution of Nigeria itself, whether written or unwritten, then the country is already divided. Whether you like it or not, it's divided. Because when you have people come to the National Assembly, they also tell you, I'm representing so-so place, I'm representing that and this. You understand? I have course to speak to a, a senator who told me, no, 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 he, he, he didn't come from my region. You get what I'm saying? So just on that ground alone, you know the country is divided. Sometimes we like to shy away from reality, but the but reality that's, that's is... Hold on, please. Let me... Even no, hold, hold on. Hold on. To what I'm trying to make... The, the idea of what I'm saying is that the, the point I'm, I'm saying is that whether you like it or not, when you say the presidency will rotate, that in itself, you know, everybody knows where they belong. That kind of country, Nigeria is one of the most complex nations in the world. You know, the number of tribes that we have, you know, the ethnicity and everything is something that you can hardly find that anywhere else in the world. There are but nations with large Hold on, I'm, I'm trying to make a point. Larger I'm trying, tribes, I'm but they, to have, make a point. they have something, sorry, they have something, it's called system. If you throw in let, a let, dog let, in the let, system, let, let, the let, dog will walk up. Let him wrap up his uh, position. You, you see, essentially, the point I'm trying to make is this. The party said they have a written constitution that power shifts from this to that. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. We can't. That's a reality. We cannot shy away from that. Mm. And it's been like that because you see, you one particular region cannot hold power perpetually. Mm. I think there's going to be peace in the long run. Do you understand? It has to rotate, or it has to even from your appointment. You cannot lump the whole one particular section and think because Nigeria is one, look a particular section in one particular parastatal or you understand or in one particular area of employment and you say oh the rest of them should understand that because it doesn't work like that there's in Nigeria. There's a thinking now, there's a thinking now that um, we should de-emphasize where you come from. You know, we try to do that. You, you don't get what I'm saying. You are talking about what should be. I'm telling you about the reality. Let us get these things clear. Mm. I'm not telling you that I, I'm, I'm arguing it that it shouldn't be like that. Mm. You're talking about what it should be. But I'm telling you what it is that we have today. But That's what I'm telling you because I'm trying to make a point. I need you to let me land. Please, please, let me land. 
<laughs> but we're saying the sugar is also what it will be, not what is less pleasant. Look, everybody has his own opinion. Everybody has his own opinion. People are dying every day. There are some of us that would not fold our arms and watch some other, I mean, some people, some criminals kill, kill other people. Yes. We, we need to do what we need to do per time. Mm. So it is your own, if you perhaps as lawyers, you also feel okay, what, what, how do I contribute to the unity of this nation? Or to this kill it, for instance. I'd, I'd come up with an idea. It's left to you. Mm. But we are contributing our quota. If we cannot stop those people, we can stop our people. There was a time we, get, we, we told them to come back to the north. Mm. If they won't stop to kill you, and the government cannot protect you, Please, can, why can't you leave if they don't want to see you there? We need to take a break here. We'll return with this conversation. Uh, and when we do, I guess there's a point we're going to take it up from. Um, and I want to dare you here. Okay. The statement by CNG, is it to steer this con con conversation? You stop, you've jolted the system with that statement. Is it to steer this kind of conversation or you are willing and able to we'll, we'll come back okay. to that discussion we'll take a break and return to conversation shortly democracy in practice Democracy in practice. Welcome back, Democracy in Practice, reaching you on the combined service of Liberty TV and Liberty Radio. My guests are still in the studio, uh, my name is Mariel Musa, who is a strategist of the coalition of uh, northern groups. Uh, yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Barrister Silas Joseph is also still here. He's an Anaguja based legal practitioner. You're most welcome. Thank you. Another legal practitioner. Uh, Ahmed Tijani Owais, also based here in Abuja, is still here. Thank you. And we're discussing issues arising from the stance just taken by the CNG on the larger, bigger issue of agitations to, um, to break Nigeria into different component parts. So many of us, through time, through different leadership, have always talked about togetherness and, and the unity of Nigeria is in itself provides the country with strength. A lot of African nations have also said that to across the world see this diversity as the strength of Nigeria and for the black race. But here we are talking about secession, we're talking about breakup and it's heating up the polity. That's what we're discussing on democracy in practice. And before we took that break, um, Malam uh, uh, sorry, Smaila Musa. The CNG stopped, jolted the system with, with, with its written, recent statement, asking the National Assembly to grant the demand by groups in this country that want to, to break away from Nigeria. Now, it has generated a lot of discourse within the public space. Is, was that the original intention? Or when it becomes, I mean, it goes further than this. You go for a breakup too, because the North has consistently through time talked about maintaining the unity and togetherness of this country. Yeah, the, the North also, even at this time, still maintains that stance. 
to a very large extent. But you see, sometimes you need to review and reassess your goals and see how far you're fearing because you see uh, security of lives and property should be paramount you know indeed the constitution says the first it, order you know, of government is security it, yeah so and if of, the of government the seems to be helpless you know we try to provide an alternative if you can't do it anymore if you think this thing is uh, it, it's a rocket science for you to achieve then you, there's another option because you know you, most of these guys always run to us remember sometimes back that the amalgamated uh, union of uh, cattle sellers and you know uh, foodstuff uh, sellers who are always carrying their stuff from the north down south it, about this about the first time the last one was about the fourth time that we had to intervene you know and i think about the third time we actually you know brought in a governor who whose state is actually at the middle maybe uh, you understand they're talking about kogi state mm. who we saw when he uh, he went to the president in uh, in company of uh, uh what's it called kafani karate when we had that uh, crisis in abaddon where you know people's goods were being burnt mm. You know, we always try to see how can we protect because you see, a lot of these people don't have a voice. They don't have anybody to say. Sometimes the things happen to them, and the government just look the other way. We we had a meeting with Wiki about three months ago, where he had, they've shifted them from their market about three four times, and he promised them of a place that was never forthcoming. Each time they try to set up a place, some tax force goes there. <coughs> Excuse me. They go there, you know, and start harassing them, extorting people. And we had to sit down with him. And, you know, he was able to see or hear so many other testimonies that he never even heard about. You understand? These are some of the things we do from, you know, to protect people who are from this region. So many other people, I mean, even here in Abuja, you have people who will say, oh, they have Nasarawa State Indigenous Association here in Abuja or whatever. It happens all over the world. You have Nigerians in the U.S., you know, Igbos in the U.S. or Yorubans in the U.S. They call, you understand? Because whether you like it or not, you can't take all these kind of things away. You know, people need to identify with, oh, okay, this is where I belong. How, when I have uh, some problems, how do, you know, do, do, do they help me? So we sat down, we analyzed all these issues, and we said, look, if the government cannot protect these people, what do we do? By going to court to, you know, ask the court to say, look, either get, uh, issue a judgment to say, let's call for a referendum, or whichever way. Unfortunately, unfortunately we were in court yesterday. You know, it was uh, due for hearing. It was adjourned because the, the judge was not in, in court. You know, it was adjourned till January. You know, so. But essentially, is we try to send a message across, right? And the message is very clear. Because when some set of people believe that, oh, the North will never allow it to go, and no, no. And that's why sometimes I don't. I can't remember. Was it when I came here? Okay, the last time I came here, we were talking about the issue of some southern governors talking about um, the revenue, uh, you know, collection and stuff. The CNG position was very clear: let them have their revenues. It's a wake-up call to our own governors. You can stop being evil. You put out your thinking cap. There are so many other ways you can generate revenues. You don't. You don't. You say you don't want this, and then you don't want a sale of alcohol. You want to sit down and determine. I mean, how it's been so you know so we say look if you are a governor before you became a governor have something upstairs to offer the people start looking for if it involves you to bring it experts to see that, how that is that is what a lot of people have been looking for oh, yeah. the question i asked i think you've answered you've sent a clear message are oh. you satisfied that you've sent that message oh. now as we speak yeah, well, I'm still trying to drive it home, but if you <laughs> want to... <laughs> okay. Now, let me paint a hypothetical situation. Okay. Seeing a person from Yoruba extraction going to clearly Borno, I mean, Kanuri territory in Borno, and sees injustice being done in Borno, and sees 
Yes, I am a Nigerian, and this injustice is affecting a Nigerian in Borno. I will stand up for it. I will not stand up only because I see a Yoruba man being the victim. Then I will stand up because he's a Yoruba man. Can we see that ever happen in Nigeria? Barrister Silas, this is your call. Like Can I you said, see that happening? Like I said, it was happening. Uh, I mean, forget the, about the past. Yeah, Can we see yeah, it happening? It was happening. It can happen if we are determined to make it happen. First of all, we must, you see, even this state creation, the military did it just to divide the country is a colonial strategy of divide and rule. State creation for the divided Nigeria. You find that even in the north, a Kano man will say, This one is a Kaduna man, mm -hmm. this one is a Zari and a, a Zamfara man. In the north, there is this sense of we are different. Based on because of state creation. In the east, Anambra man will say, This is a Bano, this is Imo. In the west, it happens. So state creation did not bring about unity in this country. It further divided us. So we need to go back to basis. We need to go back to our regional system. We need to go back to parliamentary system. The reason why we are having all this quarrel is power. Because presidential system concentrates absolute power in the hands of one person, the president. If you have a system that works for all, I can tell you, Nigerians will care less who is the prime minister. If I know that if I do A, B, C, D, I will get to E without knowing anybody. Because the system operates without discrimination. Once you're qualified to do A, B, and C, you just go for it, you get it, you move. The country will work and nobody will care who is, who is Prime Minister or Premier of his region. But it is because at the time, this country became so bad that if you don't know somebody in government, you can't be anything. So people now try to get their own person in government or to be the head of the government so that they can but get the irony everything. Is that even when you get your people in government, so-called people in government, yeah. you still should change. For instance, you talk about the North. There's been, always been this, I, I find it very funny, mm -hmm. that the North has held on to power for so long. But there is groveling poverty. It has, never, it has never been about the proletarians. It has never been about yeah. the ordinary people. When you hear all this, our turn, our turn, it is an elitist game. No the elites will benefit from that region. There is no way you will say they won't. Right now there are people who are around Buhari and they keep telling him, look, this is our time. We must use power the way we want. And that is why the country is drifting. Because their view is not nationalistic. And it is not nationalistic because uh, they are not interested in anybody. They are not even interested in the region they hmm. claim to represent. They are only interested in their pocket. Even their states. Uh, it's just their pocket because you go to their very village, you find poor people everywhere who cannot survive. Okay, let's so we need to rejig the system. We need to reorganize the country. Government should not be a source of wealth. If you want to make money, go and do business. Be a farmer. Mm -hmm. Do something for God's sake, you know? Okay. But Nigerian politics is a only source of wealth. So that is why there is so much contestation. That is why there is so much correct. And because the system has failed, you find groups coming up to take over government responsibility. If since the government cannot do it, we are going to do it. If the government will not do this, we are going to protect our people. It is the responsibility, the sole responsibility of the government to protect citizens. Okay. Not any other person's responsibility. Well, uh, the, 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 the thrust, the, the direction of this discussion is see how we can untie those naughty knots, those things that are driving this uh, agitation to, to break this country apart. Putting this thing on, let's do some balancing game, uh, uh, Barrister Ahmed. In all of this, who loses, who gains, when Nigeria stays together and when Nigeria breaks? Um, if you put the two scenarios, balance, which one? Is, it, is there a balance in terms of the winners and the gainers when you are together and when you lose? I think it's only a win when we stay together. If we break, it's a loss. And the person that loses here is the common man. Yes. The bourgeoisies or the people in power, they always try as much as possible to win in any situation. But once we divide, the common man loses. As far as I'm concerned, what we need to do is restructure. 
we need to come back, sit down on a round table. Yes, we didn't create Nigeria. It was created by some white people. So at the end of the day, we need to say, look, what is the best interest of all of us? If you look at it, when we were regional, when the government was regional government, we were more successful. The North we didn't have to wait for the South to bring get money from oil. The South didn't have to wait for the North. They had cocoa. And do. So if we go back to the drawing board, sit down and discuss, I believe we can get a way forward. But if we don't and we keep on dividing ourselves based on tribe, even like what Mr. Onu said, uh, that uh, in one tribe uh, they're, they're fighting for Kano, for, within even a state, mm -hmm. they will divide it to go. The gubernatorial will say, look, it's for time for the central. The governor must talk. All those things are, that's what is dividing us. We need to all, always understand, look, we're all Nigerians. And the best interest of Nigeria is what we should look at. And the common man is the one that is suffering all this. If we don't restructure, we don't sit down and discuss what are the issues, we'll never solve it. So what you were asking about that time, that whether it can be done or not, yes, it can be done, but we have to have, be ready to do it. There must be serious uh, intention to succeed. There are other countries that have lots of tribes, but they still manage to come back to the round table and sit down and discuss. You asked the question earlier on about age, when you asked mm. my friend here mm. about age. Mm. <laughs> age is just a number. Mm. It doesn't matter. You need capability, capacity. It's not about age. A young man can do it, an old man can do it. But whoever is right for the job is what we should look at. It doesn't matter where he comes from. I've never been uh, someone to propagate leadership based on tribe. Never, and I will never do it. Because if you look at it based on tribe, what of the chief man? Doesn't he want to be a president? Doesn't he have a right? Mm -hmm. What of the Igala man? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a right. So they're not even in the calculation. Why not? Just Ibo Yoruba. How say Ibo Yoruba? What do you say to I see they are the only people with Nigeria. And you really do want to be. So really, uh, it's enough. We need to really tell ourselves, look, the truth. Tribal issues, geographical issues will get us nowhere. We need to be united. And it's a must that we restructure. Because what is working for the National Assembly or the system that we're running now, it's not working. In all fairness, it's not working. And then we need to reduce the power in the center. The power in the center needs to be reduced. And then you don't go to government to make money. That is wrong. You go to government to serve your people, not to make money. Reduce the, the National Assembly shouldn't be, uh, it, should, it should only be paid when they come for sitting allowances. As far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of money. It's a part-time job. It's a part-time job. Continue what you're doing there when it's time to deliberate, you come. But when you make it that there's so much money to be made, constituency projects, and whatever, everybody runs. You but just, but just approve us. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> my name is, my name is, sir. Yes, sir. In all of this, moving forward, what do you see happening now that you've jolted the system? What do you see happening? Well, you see, left to us, honestly, we just want to have a very peaceful nature. We want everything to work out the way it should be. Uh, I what, actually, that, what, what, yeah, what I need to be for you. I need to lay this template so that you sure understand. <laughs> no, I need to lay this template so that you understand the position yes. of the CNG because we love to see a country that is united, and we have advocated for that. But you see. The leadership is a big team. Mm. You understand? Mm. And even we as individuals, what we're telling our children will never make anybody to unite in this nation. Mm. I can bet you that this generation is the last one that's going to unite this country. Because I'll give you a very typical example. You go on social media, of course, you know the age bracket of the ones who are always there 24-7. They're mm. still collecting money from their parents. Mm. But if you just tweet or you just go on Facebook and type, oh, maybe as an Igbo man or Yoruba man, I enter Katsida for the first time, oh, beautiful the lights, blah, blah. The comments you see underneath that, you will, you will be read, you will be first to be reading that statement you made again. Was it is it was this guy reading what I wrote? Because he will tell you that you're already a cow. That's why you could see those beautiful things. You understand? So these are the generation that we're thinking will unite this country. You, you understand what I'm saying? So really, there's a big problem. These are people who have never been have the advantage of living together. 
you know, maybe like as a Yoruba man and a house man, just like the two of you had the opportunity. Majority of these guys you see on social media, they have never lived together with another tribe. But they are the one that will tell you how this other one is so a devil. Mm. Do you understand? So really, yeah, you, you, you understand, there's so much now, profiling. One side now, you, you understand? So the majority of this comes from what these same, people the on all angles. Yeah. hear from, all you, you understand, what they hear either from their parents or something. And these are the people you're going to hand over at Nigeria to. I was on a TV station this morning talking about drugs. We've done so many things in that area that... The CBF governor one time told us, you know, as a group when we went visiting, that look, he was forced to open a rehabilitation center in Lagos for some of the staff who are kids of rich men. Because when they get to the office in the morning, they put their head on the table, they are gone until close of work. What? They are high on drugs. Mm. These are the same people you're going to hand over to the country to tomorrow. These are the people that will sit down with their counterparts and, you know, say, oh, how do we move this nation forward? So really, we are in a deep mess that it will only take the grace of God because it's going to be a miracle for Nigeria to come out of this. But bottom line, as I round up, is we love Nigeria to be united, but we hope that the government will do the needful and where is there where they need to take uh, actions you know they have to do that such that or other people don't need to say oh since the, uh, the government is not doing anything in this regard we need to do something on our own well thank you very much gentlemen i really thoroughly appreciate um, your presence and your insight and your contribution to this very serious issue on tying the knot of succession agitation in Nigeria. We hope that we'll be able to untie it and move this nation forward to, 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 to the level that it deserves to be. Thank you very much. We hope, we hope that he, found, he changed his name to <laughs> Movement for Nigerian Unity. Oh. <laughs> If you know the number of organizations I belong to, you know that is not an issue at all. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. And that's it on democracy in practice. We'll be back again with another issue in the public space. Thanks for being with us. Democracy in practice.